Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's tutorial, we're going to discuss how to dump data to a text file using two different approaches. All material is Creative Commons license, free for you to reuse within your organization. This presentation is posted out on our GitHub site. The link is listed below in the YouTube description. First up, what are the inputs? There are two input styles. The first is to export a table's contents out there's the database, there's the table list, and then there's the specific tables that you can export out to text file. And the second is to write a SQL query. And after you execute it, take the results down here and right click and save those results out as various text file formats. Next up, what are the outputs? There are at least three types of output. The first is fixed width text files. Notice that the columns here have the values aligned, straight lines vertically. White space is inserted in to make sure that the values all line up. There is no delimiter. There's just this column starts here and it ends there. This column starts here and ends there. Second, there are tab or pipe delimited text files. Notice the tab character in green here on the upper file that separates each field value, tab character in between. And on the lower file, notice that there's a pipe or a vertical bar, vertical line that separates all of these field values down here. And finally, there's comma delimited or CSV files. Notice the comma separators between all the field values, but notice the sporadic quotes. There's quotes right down here, second line from the bottom, and third line from the bottom, there's some quotes, but they're really sporadic. And what's going on here is that uh, SQL Server, when there's a trailing space, it's adding the quotes so the trailing space doesn't get lost but you can't control that. Preferably, you would have this one, two, three, this third column would have quotes on every single row. And there's a way to do that. We can force the quotes, but uh, around every column value, or we could choose to put it around just the text column values, but we'll see later how to do that. Next up, how to export a table to fixed width file. First, we open a script dialog. And to do that, we right click on the database we're interested in select tasks from the pop-up menu, and then select export data. And that will pop up a dialog box, a wizard. And the first step on the wizard is an introduction. You can read it if you like. You can even tick do not show if you like, and then go ahead and click next. Then the choose data source step comes up in the wizard. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is select the SQL Server native client option at the data source. And then you're gonna to wanna to enter the appropriate server name. I've blurred ours out, but pick one that you can use. And then you'll enter the appropriate authentication. We happen to use Windows authentication. And then you want to select the database for our test. I use master and then click next. And that ends the common steps one through three that are going to be repeated over and over throughout the rest of this video. And next, the choose destination step of the wizard comes up. And for our purposes, we're going to select flat file destination, but you could select other databases, could be SQL Server, could be Oracle, could be anything, ODBC. There's a lot of flexibility here, but for our purposes, we're going to write out to a flat file. And we're going to enter the file name, browse out to one, use the browse button. And I'm going to skip these steps and leave the default, but you could change the locale language, and you could change the code page if you want to, but I'm going to leave them. Then you're going to select fixed width for the purposes of this section of the video for the format because we want a fixed width format. That's what we're trying to do. And then tick the column names in first row because it's nice to have those listed. And then click the next button. Then the specify table copy or query option comes up. We're going to go ahead and copy the data from one or more tables. And we're going to pick one table and export one table out. But you could export more than one. And importantly, we're not going to go through this option in the video, but you could, instead of copying an entire database table, 100% of the rows, you could write a query and specify fewer columns and fewer rows. We're going to see a way to do that directly in the query, was, uh, query window later, but this is an alternative. You could, from this wizard, write SQL and have it automated this way as well. And go ahead and click Next. Next, the configure flat file destination step comes up. The wizard's smart. Whatever prior selections you make, 
guide the subsequent steps of the wizard. Because we picked a file, these are file-based questions. If we picked a database as the target, we'd have database questions. So anyway, configuring the flat file destination, the source table we're gonna pick is the SQL Server versions. And since we're doing a flat file, we don't get to choose the row or column delimiters. Those are disabled. There's an edit mappings field. I don't use that, but you could. You could click that button and up comes a list of all the columns and you could do tricky things like, hey, on the target table, make this column 50 instead of three and make it bar car instead of numeric. So you can do that kind of mappings if you'd like to and map one field out three times or whatever. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, and you can hit preview and see what the output's going to look like. But we're just going to select one table and click next. Then the save and run package dialog comes up and this is interesting. So with all these selections that you're making in the wizard here, SQL Server is actually going to go create an SSIS package and we're going to select run immediately. But And so we're going to tick that box. But we could tick save SSIS package as well and we could actually generate a permanent package, but I'm not going to. I'm going to do a temporary throwaway package. So go ahead and click next. The final step comes up in the wizard, the complete the wizard step. You can skim read this stuff here just to make sure everything's good and then click finish. And then the execution status window will come up and these green dots check marks will start appearing and it will flow down as the process goes along. And then there will be a few informational icons as well. And in the end, it'll say I'm all done. There's how many rows were transferred and there should be no red X's. If there are any red X's, click that or click the corresponding link to read what the problem was and then use the back button to go back and correct the export. But in this case, everything ran good and we're going to click the close button. And when we do, the output fixed width file was created. We can go open it up and look at it in Notepad. And there it is. There's the fixed width file that was generated by that export. Next up, how to export a table to a delimited file, tab delimited, pipe delimited, or comma delimited. So to export a table to a tab, pipe, or comma delimited file, it's similar to the flat file steps that we just did. First you open the script dialog, then you look at the introduction step in the wizard, then you choose a data source, SQL Server, so all those steps are the same. But here on the fourth step, choosing a destination is different. It's still the same, selecting a flat file destination kind of funny nomenclature because it's not a, anyway, it's, it, then you enter a file name, browse out to one, and the locale code pages leave them alone. But here is where some differences arrive, the first red line here. We want to select a delimited flat file destination. To me, that should actually say text file, not flat file. And flat file would be a format, but whatever, this, that's the way the wizard works. So be sure to select flat file and then delimited, and then I go ahead and put on the text qualifier, which is going to force quotes around every single column value. Earlier in the video, you saw where only a few rows had quotes on a few columns and it was scattershot. That's not good. It's better to be consistent. And one of the safest ways when you're doing exporting and importing is treat everything as a string. That way it's easy to import. There's no errors. And once you get it imported in, then you can have your ETL do the uh, conversions from string to date, time, string to numeric, etc. Whereas if you have it transported and it's numeric or date time, when you go to import it, sometimes you run into problems. So anyway, to me, it's just better and faster and easier and lower risk just to force the quotes on everything. And so I use the quote there. And we always tick the column names in first row, just like in the prior st uh, section. And then go ahead and click next. So we've skipped the specify table or query step here because it's the same as the flat file. You pick table for our purposes, but you could have picked query as well and written one. And now we arrive at the configure flat file destination step of the wizard. And just like in the last uh, flat file, we're going to pick a table to export the SQL Server versions. But this time we can actually choose a row delimiter. So we're going to choose carriage turn line feed and we can choose the column delimiter, a comma. So we're going to choose both of those. And note that we could alternatively, you're always going to want row delimiter to be carriage return line feed unless you're on a Mac, then maybe you want, what is it? Is it line feed for a Mac and carriage return for Unix or Linux? I can't remember. And then Windows is carriage return plus line feed, whatever. You'll know what you want. Make your selection for a row delimiter, end of row or end of line indicator. And then for, co for column delimiter, 
you can choose the vertical bar pipe, you can choose a tab, you can choose a comma like I did up here, you could choose a semicolon, you could do, <laughs> I don't know why you would want to, but you could do carriage return line feed or any combination of those. So there's a lot of options here for column delimiter that you can choose from. And then we are going to, on that same wizard step, showing the whole thing now after we've made our selections, we could go alter the edit mappings, preview it, but we're just gonna go ahead and click next. And our output delimited file was created and if we go open it up, it's comma delimited and because we put the quotes back there on step number four, every single column value has quotes around it, even the two that are numeric and that's fine because you can import them in easily, no problems, and then convert it back to numeric from there. Next up, how to save query results to a fixed width file. So now we're gonna switch up results and we're going to save results to a fixed width file, but we're gonna save results from the grid, from a query, as opposed to exporting from a table. So the prior steps that I've shown you before, we're exporting from a table and generating SSIS package, which would then generate the output file. But here we're gonna do something simpler. We're just going to run a query and down in the results, right click and save it out as various text format flavors or up here use a button to save it out. So this is simpler because you're in the query window, writing SQL and exporting or saving results out. So let's get started with method number one, saving results directly to a file. It doesn't go to the results tab down here. So we're gonna start by writing some SQL and we would start by having the grid output, run the SQL, look at the grid, yep, looks good. And once we get that done, we're gonna come in here and we're gonna click the two results button, not to table. And then we're going to click the execute button. And as soon as we do that, it's gonna run the query, but it's not gonna immediately show up down here. Instead, right before it runs a query, it's gonna ask us, prompt us to select a destination file in a save as pop-up. So I'm gonna pick in my C Windows temp directory, give it a name and click the save button. And as soon as I click the save button, then the query starts, it runs and it returns in the messages window. There is no results tab. In the messages tab, it's gonna return the count of rows. And if I go to my C colon temp folder and I double click on the file that was generated, there it is. There is my fixed width file that was generated directly. The second method to save results to a fixed width file is saving it from the test or the text results down here. So it's the same step of writing some SQL and checking it out, but now we're going to click results to text. And then when we click the execute button, the query runs and the rows are returned down here. And notice they're not returned in a grid. That would be this button right here. They're returned in a text flat file format when you do results to text. So then we're going to right click down in here in the results and select save results as, and then we would follow the same picking of a destination file, same as the prior step up here, method number one, and we would click save, same as number one. And then when we open the output file, we get the same results, a nice fixed width file or fixed output. Next up, how to save query results a delimited file, tab delimited, pipe delimited, or comma delimited. So now we're gonna save the results to a tab or pipe or comma delimited file. A little bit different from a fixed file that we just saw, and but it's similar. So there's a method number one, we're gonna save it as a tab or a CSV delimited file. We start out the same as the fixed width. We're in a query window and we've written up the SQL and we've checked the results, we know it looks good. So we're going to Click the results to grid, which is the default. That's what most people's SQL Server Management Studio is set to. We're gonna set it back to that after having played around with save directly to file here on the right and to the left, the output to flat file or to text. So we're done with those two. We wanna go back to the grid, results to grid. So we're gonna click that. Then we're gonna click the execute button. And then we're gonna get our results like we're all accustomed to, results tab, nice little grid. But then we're going to right click in the grid and select save results as. And when that comes up, there's a save as dialog. I've clipped it here at the bottom. There's a file name, but there's also save as type. And there's two types native to SQL Server Management Studio. There's CSV, comma delimited, and 
text or tab delimited and pick either one of those two and click the save button and when you're done go open the text file in notepad and you get a csv file here flavor notice no quotes though same problem as the exporter there will only be sporadic quotes there's a sporadic quote there with the space at the end and the same situation kind of lingers throughout so that's one downside of the native csv export but we'll see how to fix that in a minute and then here's the tab output and there we go tab delimiting each of the column values method number two is to save as a pipe delimited file and unfortunately there's not a way to do that in sql server management studio well there is if you export but when you're right clicking the query results there's no easy way to do it but what you actually do is repeat steps one through seven up here in method one for a tab delimited file open the tab delimited file in notepad and then just and then copy the tab double click it to highlight it control c to copy the tab character and then do a control h to open up the search and replace window and in the find what control v to paste that tab character in here and then the replace put in the pipe and then click replace all and voila you change all those tabs to pipes just that quick and easy and if we look at the output after doing that there you go all the tabs were converted to pipes and finally how to save query results to a delimited file comma delimited with forced quotes so similar to the prior bullet here but you're able to specify which column values have quotes around them and which don't so to generate a cs file CSV file with quotes from a query window and the results it's a bit trickier so first some rules and then I'll go explain what the SQL is doing down here we use quotes around text values we concatenate all the values into one column per row so it's basically every row becomes one giant cell with all of the comma delimited values in it and then the select column headers are union into the data so those three ro rows our rules are applied so let's go look at this we have a select for the column headers up here so select quotes column name quote comma quote column name quote so all the qu column names are on row one and we're going to call our row one cell one row data and then we're going to union the rest of the sql and the rest of the sql is a concat so it's going to group all of these into one cell one row one column so I'm just gonna call it one cell so you're gonna have concat you're gonna cast the value of the major version number which is numeric you're gonna cast it as a varchar 10 and a comma no quotes because it's numeric then we're gonna cast the minor version as the text value varchar comma and then we're gonna have a double quote around the branch name left double quote branch name ending right double quote and then we have a comma and so you can see what we're doing we're actually writing all the CSV values out and we're hand writing the quotes where they're appropriate and leaving them out where they're not appropriate that's how we control the creation of the quotes is by writing it right in one big SQL string so moving on we've what the heck is all that after writing the specially formatted SQL we repeat the same steps as prior examples we click the results to grid button we click the execute button and the query runs and then the data rows here are rendered and notice the data rows this block of select here major version minor version and quotes there it is line one major version minor version our column headers are this little bit of SQL and then we union in the rest so all of these rows of data are union in here and we concatenate in the major version with the comma space 10 with a comma space the minor version with a comma space 1600 comma space the branch wrapped in double quotes RTM wrapped in double quotes the URL it's blank there down here the URL is present so it's wrapped in quotes so this SQL if there's 300 rows we get 300 rows but where we used to have 10 columns we now have one column of comma delimited text so that is how the SQL works and what it renders and what we're going to do is copy all those data rows out you just click in there control a selects everything and control C to copy it select all the data rows copy to clipboard and then we go open up notepad and we control V to paste all those contents in and then we save it out as a CSV file and when we do that there's our CSV file that we saved out and that's what it looks like 
And what's nice about this format, even though it's a little bit more complex, you have complete control over no quotes around this numeric field and this numeric field and quotes around all the rest that we want quotes around in the CSV format. So that is how you generate a CSV file and control where the quotes go. Thank you for watching and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also, check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.